السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ ٹوڈے وی آر انوگریٹنگ دس گرینڈ ایونٹ آئی ایم ایکسٹریملی تھینک فل ٹو دا آرگنائزنگ کمیٹی فار گیونگ می این اپارچونیٹی ٹو بی اے پارٹ آف دس ونڈرفل ایونٹ آئی مسٹ کانگریچولیٹ دوز ہو ہیو تھاٹ اباؤٹ پروف کون آئی تھنک دس از دا نیڈ آف دا آور that we should bring together our brothers, sisters on this platform where we can exchange our thoughts, we can exchange our ideas, we can remove our doubts, we can work upon our technology, either it is artificial intelligence, as mentioned by brother Uh, Taha Rashid, I am thankful to Dr. Naseef. I welcome our guest of honor, Ab uh, Dr. Abdul Samad Amiri Sahab, that he is here. We are honored by his presence. Today, I, I was just, when I coming here, I was, because this is my first visit to this city, uh, I was just thinking what type of city I'm coming to. I have been to Kochi, but I have never been to this great city and I'm really pleasantly surprised by looking at the infrastructure which you have, the facilities which you have. I think uh, your, all the facilities which have been provided by your legislatures, your MPs, it's, it's wonderful. And this auditorium is also is one of the best, I think, in, in India, in the uh, southern region or in the northern region if you go to any part of India or country. So the main objective is this platform, I understand, that we have, to, we have to work in all the directions. Either it is technology, science, computer science. This is our responsibility as a Muslim. In Quran, the word science and one nature is, I think, mentioned more than, more than 600 or 700 times. And God has created us and he has created all types of creations in the world and he loved each and every creation. And we have to work for the beneficial, for the benefit of all those creations, not only human beings, but insects also, animals also, birds also. Everything is our responsibility because we are Ashraf al As we are known as Ashraf al it is more of our responsibility to work for the benefit of all these human beings, all the beings or living beings which are present in the world. If you see, once the Islam was uh, spread, in the, in the initial uh, part, in the first 10, 20 years, it spread very fast. Because Sahabis and followers, they went to different parts of the world. They migrated from Makkah, Medina, and they went to, they came to India, that's why Islam is here. And they also worked day and night in, 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 in pursuit of knowledge, in pursuit of science. If I mention you a few names of those great scientists who were there at that point of time, like they have worked relentlessly in the field of mathematics, in the fields of physics, in the field of medicine. I will just uh, give you a few names. Muhammad bin Musal Khwarizmi. He was a very, very great mathematician and he was the first great Muslim mathematician. He created algebra, which was supplementary advanced by others, most notably by um, Dr. Uh, so, oh, sorry, Umar Khayyam. Al Khwarizmi work was translated in several languages, and he is the father of algebra. Then we have Al Kashani. He was also another exceptional mathematician. He functioned on the theory of numbers and techniques of computations. He is the first one to come out with these theories. Then we have Abu Wafa Muhammad Al Buzanji. He was the father of supposed to be known as the various numericals, and he was born in Buzjan, Nishapur, in the year 1940 AD. He became a great mathematician and astronomer in Baghdad. He added to a solution of geometrical problems which were not solved before this, and those things are already used by uh, Europeans and Americans. Then another name is Al Hassan ibn Al Hayyam. In 17th century, he was born in Europe, and he cracked the problems framed by ma many earlier astrologers. 
His work is known as Al Hazan's Problem, which was remain as a very great example in European books. Then we have Abul Rehan Al Baruni. Al Baruni name is I think everybody is very very familiar. He was a very famous, renowned physicist. His work in physics was mentioned, and he described specific density. Before this, specific density was not known. A specific density of 80 types of precious stones was calculated by Al Baruni. Then there is another uh, renowned physicist, Abul Al Fahd. Abul Al Fahd was a very renowned physicist, and he, in relation with dynamics and hydrostatics, he worked relentlessly. Then there are many, many names, names which are mentioned in, in, in terms of medicine. If you see in medicine, Ibn Sina name is, I think everybody is familiar with Ibn Sina. Today we are practicing his principles in the Yunani system of medicine. We are study, still studying his books. He has written more than uh, 65 books at that point of time. And he is the utmost physician and he uh, the most uh, important creation of his uh, literary work is Al Khalun Fittib, which mentioned all the anatomy, physiology, all types of disease, and its treatment in terms of what type of uh, herbs has to be used, in what form has to be used, what are the different balances and imbalances which can cause diseases, and how those balances can be cured or can be uh, perfected to cure those conditions of the body. Then other uh, important name is Abu Bakr Muhammad Ibn Zakaria Al-Razi. Al-Razi uh, was uh, born in 865 AD and uh, he was born in Iran and became a student of Hunyan Ibn Ishaq and later a student of Ali Ibn Rabban. He has written more than 200 books in the area of medicine and his books are still uh, taught and is studied and evaluated for those knowledge of medicine. Then another name is Abul Qasim Al Zahravi. He is also a renowned uh, physician, and he was uh, in each, I think known as father of surgery. He designed many 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 surgical instruments, which are now they are modified in the modern science. And Europeans and Americans they have derived those designs from those ancient tools, which were used to remove various types of. Uh, you can say ailments from the body. So these are the names, why I mentioned these names. I just want to say that as a Muslim, technology, uh, science is very, very close to us. It is our main responsibility to work in this direction. In Islam, if, we, if I say we have ibadat, we have muamlat, ibadat, uh, we are all know, we are all aware. In muamlat, uh, you can say, there, there is one part sometimes which we uh, forget because we are sometimes become slaves of our traditions, slaves of our habits, slaves of our day-to-day -day life. In this life, what we are practicing, what we are doing, we have to follow our hadith, our ahadith, we have to follow Quran, we have to follow those things. But sometimes we forget those things and in Mamlat, in day-to-day -day life, we are here for examination and every a minute of our life is an examination. We will not be evaluated on a big examination. Our small decisions which we take daily is our examination. So for all the students, either they are studying mathematics, or they are studying physics, or they are studying nanotechnology, or they are studying artificial intelligence, I think we should discover new theories, we should work upon them, this is our responsibility, and we should spread peace, prosperity, health, and we should work together for the betterment of mankind. I think this is the main message of Islam. So I wish all the best to the organizers. I wish very healthy learning for all the participants. I have learned from the organizers that tomorrow we will be having more than 6,000 students. Then we have our academic interaction, academic forum, where we will present our findings or we will discuss many issues of science, many issues of uh, uh, Islam. So I wish all the best to all of them. And once again, I'm thankful for inviting here. Thank you so much.